What's up guys, my name is Reggie, and today I'm going to be showing you how to mod Valheim for Mac. Valheim's obviously an amazing game, but there are some quality of life features that the developers don't seem to be very focused on, and there are some things that can just be really annoying about the game when you can't mod it. So, thankfully there is a way to mod it on Mac. It's a little bit more difficult than doing it on PC, but it's not too bad and we should be able to get through it in about 10 minutes. So, if you just follow this guide, hopefully you'll be well on your way to a much better Valheim experience in a few minutes. Sacred task to seek this grail. First thing you're going to want to do, you can right click on Valheim in Steam and go to manage, browse local files, and that's just going to open up your Valheim directory. And we're going to be following this guide from Electric Dawn on Steam, but you won't really need that. It, it might be a good resource if you're having any issues. You can come back and check here and see if there's any updates on what you need to do. But for the time being, I'm going to kind of walk you through all the steps in here. So grab this Bepinex release. Now, this is different. Bepinex is basically the magic sauce that lets you run mods in Valheim. There is a different version of Bepinex specifically for Valheim, but you don't want to use that because it's not going to work on the Mac version of it. And you also don't want to get this latest pre-release because this version 6.0 is going to break most mods. So you're going to want to scroll down to this 5.4 release. For now, that might change in the future. And if it does, I'll, I'll pin a comment to this video. But you're going to go down to Assets and you'll pick the macOS x64 file here and you can just open that up and it'll extract it for you if you're in safari it might uh, just turn it into a folder automatically but yeah so then we're going to grab this bepinex and this lib doorstop and run bepinex.sh and we can just right click and hit copy and we're going to copy those into our game directory so this is that folder we opened earlier so you'll just click in here and hit paste and then we need to make some changes to this run bepinex.sh. So you can right click on it and hit open with and click text edit. And then we're going to go to this line right here that says name of executable. And we're just going to write valheim.app. And then we can go file, save, and close. You do want to note like the first letter right here is a capital in this version of Valheim. In older versions, it was a lowercase letter. So if you happen to have one of those older versions, just take note of that as you're entering it in there. Okay, next thing we need to do is if we try and run this file right now, it's Mac OS is not going to let us. So we're going to give it special permissions. So what you're going to want to do is click up here on the magnifying glass and type terminal and then press enter to open it. And we are going to CD or change directory into our Valheim folder. And I'll put the directory in the comments of this video so you can just copy and paste it in. Or the other thing that you can do is just come here and grab the folder here and drag it in once you've typed CD. And that'll paste it in there and then we'll press enter. And now in the terminal, we're in that folder. So now that we're in that directory, we're going to copy and paste this line, which again, I'll put that uh, in the description, but we're going to chmod and give it these permissions on this file and then press enter and that'll update the file. And then the other thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we have Rosetta installed. So Rosetta is basically the translation layer that Mac is going to use to run the Intel version of the application. And unfortunately, we can't run the Apple Silicon native version of Valheim right now because this lib doorstop and Bepinex have a few libraries that are not fully updated to run on the Apple Silicon. So you need to make sure your Mac has Rosetta installed. And you can do that by just copying and pasting this line, which again, I'll put that in the description. Uh, and it's going to basically say, you know, it's going to tell you about the EULA, type A and press return to agree. But I'm actually not going to do that because I already have it installed. So we're almost ready to start installing and testing mods. But before we do, we need to go ahead and run Bepinex one time so that we can change some configuration files. Uh, right now, if you look inside the folder, you'll see there's just this core file. So the first time we run it, it'll actually fill that out a little bit. So we're going to copy and paste this line. And the first time you do this, it's going to come up with this error saying lib door stop cannot be opened. So you can either move it to trash or cancel. And if you try canceling, it'll just pop up again. So we obviously don't want to move it to the trash because we want to use it. So we're going to click on the Apple menu up here. 
go to system settings and then you're going to scroll down here to privacy and security and then scroll down here and you will see this lib doorstop was blocked and we'll just say allow anyway and you can either enter your password or use your fingerprint and then once that's done we can go ahead and close that and then hit cancel here and it'll say it can't be can't be verified just hit open and then you'll see the game launch and Bepinex is going to fill out its configuration files there so once that's done we can quit the game and we're going to go into config so this is in your your Valheim folder Bepinex config and you'll find this Bepinex CFG file and we're going to right click on that and we'll do open with I could open it with Visual Studio but I will do other and we will say yeah right text edit right here edit open okay so in here all we need to change is right down almost towards the bottom you'll find this default or this application type so we're going to set this to game object and then we're going to just go file save and we can close out of that and we are ready to start installing mods now you're going to put your mods in this bepinex plugins folder and you're going to see right now there's no mods so if we ran it we wouldn't really have any way to test if it's working so we're going to go grab a plugin that is easy to test with to see if it's working. This, this quick stack store sort trash restock. It's a very nice plugin and it'll show up instantly. So we'll go ahead and hit manual download and then we can just click that to open it. And we can take this whole folder and put it into our plugins folder. So I will just drag that into there or you could copy and paste. I'm just going to get rid of this name here. And you can either, it's really up to you, you can just grab the DLL file for some plugins and you could put that directly into your plugins folder. I like to just grab the whole folder because Bepinex will still run the plugin and then you can keep the translations file along with the plugin and you can just kind of keep your, your mods a little more organized that way. Okay, so now that that's done, we can pop back to terminal and we're going to, I'm just going to press up on the keyboard to type that line again. Um, if you need to, you can copy and paste it from the video description and I'll press enter. And if all went according to plan, you should have a modded version of Alhive. All right, we can click start game. Now, the, one thing to note is that on this version of Alhive, we don't get the notification up here that we're running a modded version and how many mods are running. I think that there's maybe a plugin for Bepinex that you can grab that will display that information, but by default, it's not gonna show it to you. So you might think it's not working. I spent a lot of time thinking that I was doing something wrong and then I realized it actually was working fine. It just doesn't show you up here like the Thunderstore version of Bepinex does. So you might wanna create a new character to test out new mods and new configurations with, but I'm pretty confident. So I'm just going to use my character and world. And this is probably where you will notice the game uh, takes a little bit longer to load than running it natively in Apple Silicon. But once it does, you can press tab and you can see here our quick stack store and our trash. So the mod is working correctly. The last thing I'm going to show you how to do is to create an app that will run this Apple script. So you don't have to open the console and type in that command every time you want to run your mod version. And then the last thing we'll do is add that to Steam so you can run it from your Steam library. So we're going to quit out of the game and we can quit terminal and we're going to go to you can click on the magnifying glass up here and type script and it'll pull up script editor and you will do a we'll just put it on our desktop for now you can click desktop and hit new document and you're going to copy and paste this code that i'm going to put in the description and you will just paste it in here and then we can hit file save and before you hit save you want to give it a name we can call it valheim modded you could call it whatever you want and we will change it from a script to an application and then we'll hit save and then we can quit out of the script editor and if you look on your desktop you'll now have this valheim modded application and if we run that it'll start the game up but there's a few more things we want to do so one is we can do get info if you right click on it you can hit get info and we're going to drag in a custom icon so we're going to go Valheim icon and I kind of like this one so we'll click on it here and we can just right click on it and hit copy and then if we go back to our window here we can left click on the icon here and then hit command V to paste that icon in there and you can see now it looks great 
Now you could put this file anywhere. I just like to put it alongside my Valheim directory. So I'll just copy it in here. And now I have Valheim and I have Valheim modded. And last thing is we can add this to Steam. So if I go back to Steam and in the bottom left corner here, you can hit add a game, add a non-Steam game, and then you can click browse. And I can just go back to Finder and drag this folder in here. And that'll navigate me to there. And then I can click Valheim modded and hit open. And once you click that, it'll pop that into that list here. And you can do add selected programs. And then you will see here is our new Valheim modded. And if we want to get a little more fancy with it, we can right click up here and hit set custom background. And I have one that I just found online. And then you can set a custom logo. And I will set that as well. And there we go. Now, unfortunately, on Mac, right now on the Mac Steam Clay, you can't set this icon, which is a little bit annoying. But if you hit home, you can actually set these icons as well. So if we run the game and hit allow, then we can just quit out of it. So we'll hit quit. And now if I click on home up here, you can see we have this Valheim modded. I can right click that and do set custom artwork. And you could pick a file. I don't really have a, a good one necessarily for this layout. So you can come to steamgriddb.com and find the Valheim file. And there's this really cool animated image here. So we'll just click on PNG to download the PNG file. And then if we go back to Steam and right click on Valheim modded here, we can go manage, set custom artwork, and we will go to our downloads folder. And here's that PNG, we'll hit open. And there we have our animated PNG looks so good. So yeah, then you can just click it and hit play and you'll be off to the races running your mods. And if you want to remove mods, you can just delete them out of the folder. If you want to add them back, just drag, drag them back in. Hope that was helpful, you guys. Enjoy your modded Valheim. Don't forget to like the video and leave me a comment if you found this helpful. And if you enjoy this kind of content and want more of it, you can feel free to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.